this is a quick buyer's guide on my opinion on buying a lathe mill combo. Uh, this one is mine, it's a Shop Task 1720. Uh, they don't make these anymore. Uh, would I buy it again today? Uh, no. No, I wouldn't. But if you're in a tight spot and you don't have enough space, this kind of machine can get you by and get you into machining. Uh, however, if you have the space for two separate machines, save up your pennies and buy separate machines because it will serve you better in the long run, make you a much happier machinist. That's the short version. Uh, so why not buy one of these? They're inconvenient. Uh, even though they will do both things, they'll be a lathe and a mill, you have to change it from being a lathe to being a mill each time. It doesn't do both at once. You're going to have either your uh, lathe tool post here or you're going to have a vise. Now some of the Grizzlies, they do have a vise underneath the tool post, so that may help. But you're still going to have to true up your vise every time. You can't just leave your vise on the mill like most people do once they have it straightened up. Uh, that's a biggie. Uh, and it's not going to be as good as a standalone lathe. It's not going to be as good as a standalone mill. The big thing there is your rigidity. It's not as rigid as a machine of the same size would be if it was dedicated to the purpose. On the, on the mill, you've got this long section here. And then the tool's got to come down here to the table. When I push my finger when it's extended that far, it can go three or four thou. It's not very rigid. Uh, likewise on the lathe, normally your lathe uh, spindle would be closer to the to the ways. This one is up here. This says it's a 17 inch lathe, but real 17 inch lathes are 10 times as heavy. They're about three and a half thousand pounds and they're seven horsepower, not three quarter horsepower like this one is. So you can put 17 inches in here, but you can't cut it unless it's something like bread. Uh, there are three different general kinds of these machines available on the market. Uh, this is what I would call the long head, where you have separate motors for the lathe and mill. Again, they're three quarter horsepower, 110 volt usually. Uh, you've got belt drive here, you've got a separate set of belts down there. In this case, we've got uh, five way pulleys. So this is pretty much a drill, a drill press head um, and over there you've got a really annoying belt change when you want to change speeds. Um, so that's the, the motor setup. Uh, there's a smaller format of these that I'll call the short head where there's a single motor with gearing up to the top. Those have this spindle much closer to the chuck. So it looks like on those, if you want to do any kind of sizable work, you're going to have to take the chuck off every time you, you want to use the mill. So that's an extra level of inconvenience. Uh, those also have a much small, because the, the head is literally all the way in here. Uh, it's much smaller uh, work environment. They also tend to, on the different models, uh, you lose some of the features. The big one on the mill is the heads don't go up and down, or if they do go up and down, they don't go up and down on dovetails. They'll usually go up and down on a pillar, or in this case, not at all which means either you're stuck with no head movement or you've got to re-zero every time you use the head movement. It's not like on a proper mill where you've zeroed your work, you want to go up to, to you want to raise the head to put a drill in, you've still got your zero. You have to re-zero every time. Again, it's inconvenient, it's more time consuming. Uh, things that will be missing on the lathe quite often is the on your full lathe apron, you're going to have uh, a rapid feed with a ratchet, you're going to have a half nut, you're going to have a threading dial, you're going to have separate power feed, you're going to have uh, all that stuff. Uh, you may even have power cross feed. Uh, this machine, for instance, doesn't come with any of that. I've got a lead screw and a solid nut. Uh, most of them are going to have gears to change in the back here for your for your threading. That's kind of normal on, on smaller lathes, so that's not much different. But uh, a lot of them, you'll find those features aren't there anymore. So look out for that. Is they're giving you a lot, but none of it's as good as the real thing. Major con. No, the one one more thing. Uh, this one in particular has a three-inch head travel, and it's an MT3 spindle. Uh, if I want to go 
to a different length of tool to get to my, my work piece, the extension is four inches. So I can only move this three inches. So I have a one inch blind spot. That's really annoying. If you're really short of space, this can do the job. But if you have the space, buy the separate machine.